How's it going, Section 215? This is co-editor Summers Price checking in, and today we are going to discuss everyone's favorite curmudgeon in Philadelphia, none other than Ruben Amaro Jr. Now, we've, we at Section 215 enjoy nothing more than writing about Rube and all of his wonderful moves that have turned the Phillies from arguably the most dominant team in baseball to, well, you get the picture. Anyway... I think it's pretty safe to say that Ruben's career has probably reached a point where he even admits that the Phillies are a failure. There's really no other way around it. They're, you know, they're, they're old. The organizational depth is terrible. Uh, I think their single-A team is about to set a record for futility, and none of the teams, minor leagues or majors, have a winning record. So... Pretty safe to say things aren't looking too good for our man R.A.J. The real question is, how much longer can David Montgomery and the Phillies organization fool themselves into thinking that keeping Omaro Jr. on board isn't just making the team worse? I mean, the franchise, you know, they signed this big TV deal and yet attendance is as low as it's been in this millennium and there's really no sign of things on the horizon to come. And it seems like every single transaction and every call up that they try and inject a little life into the team ends up backfiring on them. They fly by the seat of their pants with all their call ups. It's really just embarrassing at this point. I love the Phillies, don't get me wrong, but it's impossible to cheer for them at this point. So, one has to think, is there is there a date on the horizon where you know, the upper management might actually think, okay, we've got Pat Gillick still within the organization. Granted, it's in more of a advisory type role, but he, ha he has worked wonders with multiple organizations as far as turning good teams great, turning great teams into champions, and perhaps even turning this hunk of scraps into something that might resemble a team with somewhat of a future. So trying to think of things logically, which is something the Phillies don't seem to like doing very much, so I'm going to do it for them. The trade deadline is July 31st. We all know that. Honestly speaking, unless the Phillies want to trade Cole Hamels, which, to be honest, as much as I love Cole Hamels, is starting to look like a better and better idea, they really don't have a whole lot, by the way, of prime pieces that could bring back a lot, by the way, of prospects or young talent. That being said... They do have some pieces, and maybe a competent GM could squeeze a little out of some other teams who are desperate to try and make a run. There's a log jam, you know, in our own division as well as around the league. And usually the time of the, of the calendar year where you can get, you know, value that might even be higher than what your players are is the trade deadline. So, today it's about... A little over six weeks from the trade deadline. The Phillies have signed their first their first round pick, Aaron Nola. That's something I understand why keeping Ruben Amaro on board for. That made sense. I think if this organization wants to start turning things in the right direction, and as much as they should have started this at this point last year, if they allow the Ruben to stay on for an entire other season and then fire him, they're selling themselves short as far as what type of value they're going to be getting for their players if they actually decide to trade. So, with that in mind, I would say unless they unless they fire Ruben in the next three or four weeks, we could be looking at an entire net full season of Ruben Amaro Jr. still as the general manager of the Phillies. I know that's not what any of us like, but we've been beating down the door to have Ruben Amaro Jr. fired for what seems like two years now. I think if this organization wants to prevent themselves from really setting themselves up for about three or four years minimum of losing seasons and lack of competition, they need to fire Ruben Amaro Jr. by the start of July. At that point, maybe Cliff Lee is back, you give him a couple of starts, you have a guy like Pat Gillick running the show temporarily. Now, there's no way Pat Gillick is going to be the GM past a temporary role for the rest of the season. But he has shown the ability to get good value out of trades. 
he has the, the eye for talent that Ruben never had. So, if they are able to get Ruben Amaro out by the end of June, I'd say that's the drop of the hat date, then maybe you can start to turn things around just a little bit. The problem is, <laughs> the fact that the NL East is as bad as it is, Ruben still has the argument that the team is, what, six and a half games back right now? I don't even know what it is. The Nationals appear to be starting to build build up a little bit of a role, and they have the type of talent that can run away with the division. The Braves do as well, although their pitching rotation isn't nearly as strong as Washington's, so they might remain as sort of the meddling team that they've been for the last little while, unless they go on a real hitting tear, because their lineup is, in my opinion, the best in the best in the division. So what's most frustrating about this situation is that for the past couple of years, we've heard Ruben Amaro say that he thinks the team is in contention and that there might be another run left in him. This year, even though he admitted recently that the best years are behind them, all you have to do is point to the standings and technically you can't say that Amaro Jr. is wrong. The Phillies are numerically still in the race whether or not David Montgomery actually believes that, and if he watches the games, I don't know how he could do that, that remains to be seen. So, if this organization wants to start, you know, reestablishing themselves as one of the better organizations, not only in baseball, but in sports, and really cash in on this TV contract that they fed down our throats for the last couple of years, only to have attendance numbers drop as low as they have, they need to get Ruben Amaro Jr. out of there by the end of June, or it's going to be another half decade of bad baseball at Citizens Bank Park. And those attendance numbers aren't getting any better because it will have meant that the organization, despite terrible results on the field, kept a man in charge for well beyond where, how long he should have been there. So let's optimistically say... My prediction, if the organization wants to get things back on the right track, for Ruben Amaro Jr. losing his job would be June 31st, giving you a month to try and get as much value out of, you, out of the roster as possible before the trade deadline. That's all I have, I have to say on that. We'll obviously be keeping a close eye on any and all developments with the Phillies front office and the trade deadline at Section 215. So, you know, hopefully the Phillies start to come to their senses because it seems like it's been years since they've had. That's all I got for now, Section 215. Until next time, I'm Summers Price.